Hello, I'm Dr. Margaret and I'd like to talk to you about money. There are so many things that many of us worry about getting. For example, we get married and we think about that nice little rosy cottage or that apartment in a tall building or perhaps we think about growing away from our family and becoming more independent for example, buying our first car. There are many things that we think we want materially and it all costs money. But what do you think about money really? I'd like to share with you how I was when I was a child and it wasn't easy because I was born in England and uh, during the war, that is, and there wasn't much, you know, England and Europe lost most of the things during that Second World War. But it was a good thing in another way because it taught me to think about what I had and to appreciate it. So if someone gave me a penny back in those days, to me, that was a lot of money. I had a whole penny that I could go to the sweet shop, candy shop, and buy some licorice or some gum. Well, today that same piece of candy is going to cost a lot more. But what do you pay for it now? 10 cents? 100 yen? Who knows? It's all depending on where you are in the world and what your monetary value is. But whatever it is, somewhere in your early childhood, you learned the value of money by what you could buy with it. And because you were small, and because you were only given small amounts of money, you learned at that very young age that that penny, or that dollar, or that yen, or uh, Deutsche Mark, or franc, or whatever it was, was a lot of money. And of course, as you got a little bit older, you were given a little bit more money for dinner, lunch, or to buy something on the way to school for break time. And your parents, I'm sure, would have said to you, this is a lot of money. Now you make sure you don't lose it. You spend it wisely. You know, I had to work very hard to earn this money and I don't want you to waste it. You take that in, you're serious about that. At least I was. I had to appreciate all the money that my mum and dad gave me. It was called pocket money. And I was supposed to manage my affairs with that pocket money. So when I was given in old money shillings, that was a lot more money than pennies. And of course as I got older, I wasn't just given shillings, I was given a pound note, which was even more money. So I was rich when I had a pound note. Well, that was a lot of years ago. And today, a pound note isn't worth much. In fact, nobody can buy very much for a pound in England. And if I transfer that to a dollar, because I live in the States now, I certainly can't buy very much with my dollar. But what is my mind thinking? when I go shopping? Well, it's quite simple really. That little child self in me that thought I had so much money when I had my first pound or my first dollar is now saying, that's not enough money. I have to work very hard to make more pounds, more dollars. And when I get those pounds and those dollars, I might get 20 pound and I think, well, that's a lot. But it's soon spent. And as the years go by, oh, I need to make a hundred pounds or a hundred dollars. And even that's soon spent. And over time, no matter how much money I earn, it's never enough. Because there's always something more I have to buy. When you might ask, am I managing my affairs very well? Am I watching how I spend my money? Well, the answer to that is, of course, I believe I am, just as I believed I did so long ago when I was a child. So I've adapted. 
I've learned to think bigger dollars, bigger pounds, bigger yen, wherever I am. I happen to be in Japan right now. Uh, and I think about how I'm managing that money. And of course, I'm saying things like, well, you know, when I was 20, I could buy a house for £3,900, and now that house costs £300,000. What a big difference. The money benefits have changed. The world has changed. Our attitudes to how much money we have has changed. We have a technical age. We want more things, things to help things along. I know if you buy a computer today, it's not just buy a computer. We now have to buy the programs. And then we have to buy the extra memory drive. And then we have to buy a stick. And then it goes on and on. And before we know where we are, we've spent thousands. Things aren't cheap anymore. But was it really any different when I was a child? Probably not. Okay, I wasn't buying technical equipment, but I was certainly thinking how much money could I find to spend on some bread or on a new pair of shoes or a new skirt and how long would those things last before I'd have to buy another one or buy something to put in my bedroom that would make me feel comfortable and so on. A lot of people in my generation learn to be hoarders keep those things because you just might not get any more next year or the year after. After all, we don't know how well our money is going to last. There are lots of people my age who have too many things in their closet. So I'm going to encourage you, if you're one of those, to go and have a good clean out. If you haven't used it in the last three months, then you certainly probably won't use it in the next three months. So better to have a garage sale and sell it and let your junk be someone else's profit. And then at least you'll have some dollars, yen or pounds or whatever money you have in your pocket. Which is better because now you can go out and get something else. <laughs> but really, my point of this conversation is to say that deep inside your brain is your belief that a small amount of money is all you're entitled to and therefore all you can manifest. And even though you adapt with the times and you have to learn to spend more money on a daily basis, that little child mindset of protecting your money, not spending too much, or misusing it and abusing it, is running as a little tape, a little message underneath your conscious mind. So no matter how much you think you're being sensible with your money, you're actually in the past. So if you're 20, you're probably 15 years behind lifestyles. If you're my age, well, I'm a good, good 60 years behind all that and more. So Yes, we are affected by our history, and we do try to adapt with our ideas about manifesting money. Every day, I get emails telling me that I can make money on affiliate marketing, or I can make money by selling my books a certain way. Of course, all these little emails come with a little message saying, spend money to make more money. And of course, if I was to bite on those ideas, I could be spending an awful lot of money on somebody's programs and sit looking at all these files in my home and, like so many people, become befuddled by so much information that I don't know how to use or don't have the time to use. The bottom line is, if we want to make money, we have to work for it. We have to program ourselves to work hard and of course that goes back to when we were children again and we were in school and someone said well you're going to grow up one day and you're going to have to provide for yourself and so you need to learn your math and your English and you need to get A's and B's in your grades so that you can be a professional and if you opted out 
and decided to leave school at 16, then you found out that you still had to work hard no matter what you learned in school. And if you went to university and you worked really hard and studied well and got your degree, then you found out anyway that when you went to work, you still had to work hard at whatever it is you've been trained to do. I meet so many people all the time that tell me how qualified they are and how long they've studied and are petrified to start their own business or go to work for somebody else because they feel inadequate and insecure. Where does that come from? From that inner child you when you were a baby. From the part of you that was first told you have to learn to be independent and provide for yourself. How could you learn that when there is a mom and a dad waiting on you every moment, telling you what to do, what not to do? We all grow up and we all expect someone, oh dear, <coughs> excuse me, we all grow up and we all expect someone to tell us what to do and yet when they do tell us what to do, we don't really like it. We want to make choices ourselves. And yet, if we do make a choice, we first turn around and say to our best friend or family member, what do you think? Do you think I've made the right choice? Do you think I'm doing things in the right way? Well, how about thinking about you being your own advisor and asking yourself, what do I think? And giving yourself a response which tells you, hey, I like me and I like what I do. Are you confident? Can you do that? Or are you the doubting Thomas? Afraid that whatever you do, you'll manifest something that's not right. Something you can't cope with. Something that you're not prepared to deal with. Something that leaves you wanting more. Yes, money. Money goes around, just like in the song. You have it, you lose it. You gain it, it goes away. And the material things that you bother about, that you think you need, they disappear too as time goes by. You start to realize, hey, I can do better. There's another thing that's better, an improved thing that's better. I want more, I want more. What happened to settling for what you need rather than what you don't need? What happened to using the things that are important and appreciating them rather than just leaving them on the shelf, collecting dust? If you're creative, use your creative skills. Invent ways to make things work for you. Find time to use the old equipment and really see what you've learned by using it. Lately I was cooking and I pulled out some shredders I hadn't used in years. And I found that it worked much more efficiently than my new electric one that kept getting blocked. So sometimes the old things are better, the old ways are better, the old thoughts and mindsets are better. So spend some time thinking about what you learned years ago, things that maybe you need to use again, ways you need to talk again, or perhaps you need to transform and change them because they were negative. I'm going to leave you with that thought today, that money isn't the root of your needs. What is the root of your needs is to listen to your spirit self and to listen to simplicity in the way you use things in the world. You don't have to have every latest equipment or the latest fashion or the updated book or version of some program. What you need is to use your skills to hone them, to adapt. And yes, it does involve hard work, study, and belief in yourself. So take a deep breath, realize the shift is on you, and that you are about to go back to school and study. Whether it's studying your own personal past in private meditation, or whether you're going to go to a college and enroll in a course, you're going to use talents, skills, abilities that you acquired a long time ago and it's time to use them again. And yes, 
if you believe in yourself and your skills, you can manifest all the money you need to get along. If you have too much money and you have too many things, they control you. And the next thing you know, you're in debt, up to your eyeballs as they say, worried out of your mind about how you can control all these expenses and of course end up losing everything you got. So stay simple. Use simple things. Work diligently and believe in your effort. If you'd like to connect with me, write to me, Dr. Margaret, rvc at gmail.com. I do answer all my mail. If you like the way I talk, then perhaps you'd like to go to my radio show on Web Talk Radio. It's called Journey into an Unknown World. And maybe you'd like to download my free hypnosis meditation to make you feel better. All you have to do is go to my website, drmargaretrvc.com, put in your email so I know you're a real person and not some spam, and then you'll get an email back giving you the link to download it. Listen to it often because it will help you through this year. Learn to simplify. Learn to enjoy the changes as they happen. So until I talk to you again, perhaps you'd share this, like this, and maybe subscribe to my channel. Be happy.